wote na mtazamaji unaendelea kutazama kivumbi cha mwaka 2017 tukiwa tunatathmini hali ambayo inashuhudiwa katika uchorobo wa mahakama hii leo vikao 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 vimeanza rasmi kuhusiana na kesi ya urais ilo asilisho na muungano wa NASA tunataka kudadisi kile chochote ambacho kimefanyika hii leo lakini kwanza tuanze mahakamani ambapo mwanahabari Sofia Wanuna amekuwa akifuatilia vikao hivi mchana kutwa watu warifu na kinachoendelea kwa hivi sasa Sofia nini ambacho unaweza kutueleza kwa hivi sasa tumeona mawakili tayari wameondoka mahakamani nini ambacho tutarajie Asante sana Zubeda Kome lakini utaniruhusu ni nene kwa lugha ya Kiingereza tafadhali uh, big day today it has been the first of the hearings for the presidential election petition we have just concluded concluded today's seatings and uh, most councils if not all have just left the precincts of the Supreme Court we had a flurry of activity right outside here a few moments ago but we see a few of them still in consultation uh, but the better today is uh, when we got to hear the petitioner's uh, case, those oral submissions in uh, open court before the seven judges of the Supreme Court, uh, taking about five hours it was, was, was given to them, and various counsel uh, taking turns, each under various thematic areas in their petition to address the judges. And after that, we saw one of the interested parties whose uh, case is largely in support of some of the issues raised uh, by the petitioner, that's a Kuru court through his counsel as well, uh, getting 20 minutes to address uh, the Supreme Court. And after that, the first and second respondent, uh, that's the IBC and the IBC chair, three hours choosing to compile uh, or rather to combine uh, their submissions, their lawyers taking turns as well around the various key issues they felt had been raised in the petition and rebutting the same. And so Zubeda, I mean, following these proceedings from early morning up until now uh, of course what we expect tomorrow as we've heard from the chief justice we'll be hearing from the third respondent who also has three hours that's president uhuru kenyatta through his counsel fred ngatia ahmed nasir abdullahi perhaps others as well will be able to address the court and there's the other, other interested party that's michael wainana who was a presidential candidate as well as was allowed to be enjoyed as an, enjoined as an interested party. And of course, Zubeda, there's also the friends of the court, the Attorney General and the Law Society of Kenya. But in summary, what we've heard today, the petitioner arguing that no matter how small or little the irregularities may appear, the court must hold that if the election, the 8th of August general election, was not conducted to the letter of the law, and they went to length to just break down the areas they felt there were malpractices, they felt things didn't, were not conducted and were not carried out in the fashion and manner in which the law stipulates that then that that should hold for the election to be annulled. The argument they made today is that once they have uh, proven that in fact there were irregularities, then the burden shifts from the petitioner, shifts now to the first respondent who is legally uh, or in accordance with the law required to conduct a free and fair election, a credible, verifiable, accountable election, and that it's now on them to prove that. Uh, however, the petitioner arguing that, uh, and we've had even with the submission a few moments ago, Pierre Lumumba appearing for the IBC, saying he who alleges must prove and that that uh, burden of proof does not in any way uh, shift at any point from the petitioner to the first or second respondent, arguing if they've made allegations, they must prove that those allegations are true, but not only true, but they had an impact on the final presidential results. So that's a con contestation. I beg your pardon, contestation we're hearing from both sides. The petitioner arguing it does not have to be about proving that the issues arising from the election uh, had an impact on the presidential result in the, uh, that was announced by the chairman of the IEBC, but the first and second respondent arguing that, in fact, they must prove that's the case. And we've also heard the 2013 presidential petition being highly quoted because in that matter, that is what the judges held. But the petitioner in this case, in essence, 
citizens asking the Supreme Court to reverse itself on that decision and find that it is not necessary for the petitioner to prove that the mis uh, the malpractices or the issues arising, if at all, from the August 8th elections uh, would overturn the results as was announced or would have significant uh, impact on the presidential election, uh, Zubeda. Sofia labda pia utueleze kesho tunatarajia nini kifanyike kwa sababu tumesi vile ambavyo pia umetutajia pale ni kwamba tunatarajia upande wa Rais Uhuru Kenyatta kutoa hoja zake na pia wale marafiki wa mahakama je tunatarajia wazungumzie mambo gani hasa uh, ikizingatia yale madai ambayo yametolewa hili na upande wa NASA Zubeda will definitely be expecting the third uh, respondent, that's President Uhuru Kenyatta, to largely have a case that is not too far from what we've had from the first and second respondent. Then, in fact, the 8th of August general election was carried out in accordance to the law. And the few discrepancies uh, we've heard the first and second respondent today describe them as minor, as those that have no bearing on the actual final results announced by the chair of the IBC, who's also the returning officer for the presidential election. So we'll hear arguments around the law. We'll hear arguments uh, around the burden of proof again, you know, saying that the petitioner has not uh, perhaps brought uh, evidence, has not proven, you know, uh, in court today uh, that whatever issues they may have raised, the uh, polling stations, the discrepancies in figures on the Forms 34, a, had, enough had enough impact on the results as was announced on those figures. So it's better we'll hear more of that. And their case... Uh, of course, will be uh, to prove that Uhuru Kenyatta was validly re-elected and that that election result should not be nullified and that there are no sufficient grounds for that. And they will perhaps remind this uh, particular bench of judges to remember what uh, the 2013 bench upheld that, uh, on what I was talking about earlier, uh, that in fact he... Uh, who, if it's a petitioner alleging there were issues, should also go further to show that those issues were significant enough to uh, have an impact on the final result. So we've seen a lot of back and forth uh, as well. And you asked a question there, Zubeda, about the amicus curia. And as we've been reporting, uh, they are not parties per se in as far as interest uh, on the uh, petitioner side or the respondent side. But theirs is to bring in information that would uh, have bearing on the case to assist the judges uh, in information uh, regarding the law to be able to decide uh, jurisprudence from other uh, uh, jurisdictions as well. So that is what we'll be hearing perhaps from the Attorney General. He has been guided uh, by the Supreme Court, the scope in which he should explore when he makes his submissions tomorrow. The Law Society of Kenya as well was guided as the rulings were made yesterday. So they will be seeking to just add on in as far as the legal issues that arise uh, from this case. And we've heard a lot in as far as the technology questions. Remember, there's that ruling uh, that was made earlier on this morning before the hearings uh, commenced that, that granted uh, the petitioner that application to scrutinize and be able to audit, uh, although with the limitations set by the Supreme Court, into the log service and, of course, all of the areas and permissions that were granted by the Supreme Court were highlighted and stipulated in uh, that uh, uh, ruling earlier today. It was uh, uh, read out by Justice Lenaola, one of the judges of the bench. It is a process that will be taking place, perhaps already underway tomorrow as well, and we expect uh, the report from that exercise that is being overseen by officers uh, from the judiciary to be submitted. And it is expected it perhaps will in one way or another also have a bearing as to whether it will alter uh, what we've already heard and change completely the direction of this particular petition. We will wait to see. Uh, but what we've heard throughout this day is that the uh, respondents, the first and the second, saying that this petition does not hold water. This petition does not prove uh, that the uh, results as announced by Fuller Chebukati Chair IBC uh, were incorrect. They have admitted to a few issues here and there, but said those are in, uh, insignificant. And when on ahead some of the council to say usually some issues um, in an election rather there will be issues there are no perfect elections we had uh, some of the council submit today and that to raise that and require the highest court in the land to annul an election on that basis uh, would not uh, be setting uh, 
a good precedent going forward. So Zubeda, we're likely to hear more uh, on these areas. We definitely will remember after that as well, uh, the petitioner will have an extra hour to respond to all the issues that will uh, have been raised. Zubeda. Katika swala hilo bado kabla haujaondoka labda tueleze kwa sababu tumeona wale viongozi wa NASA au upande wa NASA wametakiwa kuwasilisha ripoti yao kesho kufikia mwendo wa saa kumi na moja. Je, tunatarajia kwamba uh, matokeo ya ukaguzi wao wa uh, mashine hizi za IBC vifaa hivi vya IBC ripoti hiyo itajadiliwa kesho au kutakuwa na kikao maalum ambapo uh, wataweza kujadili yale ambayo yatakuwa yamejitokeza kutokana na uchunguzi ambao watakuwa wameufanya? Uh, as a better kumbuka, it's a process that's not just been conducted by the petitioners' uh, parties. It's all parties being involved. Uh, they all have representatives, as I mentioned there, including uh, officers from the judiciary. And as far as what happens after that report is submitted in court tomorrow afternoon, we had 5 p.m. as a time that was set. It will be up to the judges and the kind of uh, discretion, of course, they hold in this matter. They are in charge of the process. They will be guiding. But uh, one thing to definitely remember is that the timelines are strict and tomorrow will be the end. Uh, clearly we are going to be seeing of the proceedings in court before now the judges retreat to deliberate, to sift through uh, through more of that evidence that has been presented to them. Remember there were written submissions. What we are witnessing today was just that oral now uh, narration of what they'd already written uh, to the judges and the judges are able to sift and, uh, through that even after the seatings here. So it is expected they will retreat and Friday is when we'll be hearing that judgment and from uh, what we heard uh, from the Deputy Chief Justice uh, during the pre-trial conference, it is very likely uh, that this uh, Supreme uh, Court will seek to actually have a written uh, judgment on the thinking on what they considered in arriving at their judgment uh, as opposed to what we saw uh, in 2013 when uh, during the on the final day of rendering the judgment, the judges pretty much came out and read a summary of the same and they said due to time constraints they would then be releasing a uh, written reasoned out judgment later but all indications appear this time around we will be getting that uh, uh, judgment in full uh, but definitely a lot of issues uh, Zubeda that have emerged today uh, of course for that it is uh, on the late uh, Chris Msando we saw that clip that was played uh, in open court as well uh, and he talked about in that clip that uh, the processes that had been put in place the, the systems were impenetrable and that uh, the petitioner argued that it showed in some instances says in affidavits they quoted uh, that in one way or another uh, the commission's officials were able to in one way or the other alter some of that and this is some of the arguments we've been able to see uh, so a lot of information uh, that has been provided here a lot that the seven judges of the Supreme Court will be considering uh, after the hearings end tomorrow in the next uh, uh, two days before they render their judgment uh, but for the populace to remember that you know Kenyans that this is it whatever they rule um, that's the final word there is no appeal and we will as a country have to abide with the decision of this apex court zubeda na mshukran sana sofia tutakuwa tukija kwako baadaye katika matangazo hayo utaarifu na mengi zaidi ni mwanahabari wetu sofia wanuna ambaye amekuwa akifuatilia matukio yanayojiri katika ushoroba wa mahakama kitaarifu na kinachoendelea kwa hivi sasa na kila ambacho kimeshuhudiwa hii leo na jinsi ambavyo tumekamilisha pale haya mahojiano yetu ni kwamba uh, upande wa nasa meruhusiwa kudurusu mitandao ya IBC kudurusu stakabadhi zote kukagua jinsi mitandao ilivyotumika nani aliyekuwa na uwezo wa kuingilia ile mitandao wakati gani na tutakuwa tukiangazia mengi zaidi katika mahojiano ambayo yatafanyika muda sio kwa mrefu lakini kwanza kabisa tuanze kwa kuangazia kile ambacho tumeandaliwa na mwanahabari Jeff Kirui Muungano wa NASA leo ulipata fursa kuwasilisha hoja zao kuhusiana na imani yao kwamba uchaguzi mkuu uliopita hauko wa haki na huru wakidai kuwa rais Uhuru Kenyatta alikabidhiwa ushindi kutokana na ulagai kwenye mfumo wa kujumlisha na kupeperusha matokeo mawakili wa NASA wakidai kuwa mbinu wa hesabu iliyotumika ilihakikisha kwamba kila anapopata kura Raila na rais Kenyatta anapata kwa kiwango kilichohakikisha pengo linasalia kuanzia mwanzo hadi mwisho he indicates that using that formula all you need to know is how many votes prime minister raila has at any one time 
and the votes of President Uhuru will come out automatically. And that he can demonstrate in court if you wish. Ni kwa msingi huo ambapo NASA iliwasilisha ombi kutaka kukagua na kupekuwa kitovu cha kuwasilisha matokeo ya uchaguzi. Na hatimaye ilikuwa fueni kwa upande huo baada ya jopo la majaji saba wa mahakama ya juu kuwafikia kuwapa idhini finyu kukagua na kupekuwa mfumo huo. Jaji Isaac Linaola akisoma mwafaka huo wa majaji akisema shughuli hiyo itasimamiwa na msajili wa mahakama hiyo kila upande husika ukitakiwa kuwasilisha watu wawili kwa waangalizi wa shughuli hiyo The petitioners as well as the third respondents shall be granted a read only access which includes copying if necessary of the following information A information relating to the number of servers in the exclusive possession of the first respondent. B, firewalls without disclosure of the software version. C, operating systems without releasing the software version. D, the password policy. Wadau watakao shugulikia wakitarajio kutuwa ripoti muendo wa saa kumina moja jiyo ni jumane. Vile vile majaji hao waliamrisha IEBC kukabidhi upande wa NASA fomu 34A zilizo halalisha matokeo ya vituo vyote 1440883 pamoja na fomu 34B kutoka maeneo bunge yote 290 The thing that I will request uh, this ruling has an impact on the way we we had planned to present the case and in fact it enabled us to crystallize our case uh, as a result of this order. First and second respondents will fully comply with the orders that your lordships have given. As we said when you are responding to this application, the commission has absolutely nothing right. <laughs> Ida wakili Otiende Amolo alidai kuwa baadhi ya maafisa wa kujumlisha kura katika kiwango cha eneo bunge waliotia saini Form 34A walikuwa bandia. Wakili Okongo Omoge ni kuupande wake akiwasilisha hoja ya madai kwamba jubilili ilitumia vitisho hasa kuwatishia wapiga kura wanaodhaniwa kutoka upande wa upinzani. Hapo kesho upande wa Rais Uhuru Kenyatta akiwakilishwa na mawakili wake Fred Ngati na Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi unatarajiwa kuwasilisha hoja zake pia upande wa tumehuri ya uchaguzi IEBC ukiwakilishwa na wakili Paul Mwite wa Fula Chebukati mwenyekiti wa tume hiyo akiwakilishwa na wakili wake Isa Mansur Jeff Kirui KTN leo sasa hivi tunataka kubadilisha ndimi kidogo uh, na mwanahabari wangu uh, mwenzangu <laughs> Linda Ugutu ameingia studio ni anacheka ninaposema kwamba mwanahabari wangu mwanahabari mwenzangu Linda Ugutu ameingia studio ni kuendeleza mahojiano kuhusu mambo ambayo yamejitokeza kileo katika mahakama ya juu atakuwa kidadisi kwa kina yale ambayo uh, nasi wameruhusiwa kuyafanya na kwa kiwango gani na huenda yakawa na athari gani katika kesi hii Linda Zubeida usijali bwana mimi wako sisi tuko timu moja nashukuru sana Zubeida uh, Kome thank you very much for um, keeping this conversation alive as we focus on the 2017 presidential petition this is where we switch gears and we tell you in a nutshell what exactly has happened today um, so we'll be having this con this conversation with Sofia Wanuna who is still at the Supreme Court for us she's been following this proceedings the entire day and of course with uh, some other team members as well but in studio we'll be speaking to George Njoroge an IT expert he's seated on uh, my immediate at left and then right next to him we have Ishmael Nyaribo um, as well who's a lawyer so just helping us look at what exactly has happened at the Supreme Court today and why is it important why is it a conversation that probably a lot of people are having in the country but for now allow me to take a short breather we'll be back